Hello everyone, hello the world, hello YouTube, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing good. So, as promised, here's the follow-up of the of the of the video where I started working on bricks, but I must warn you this is a very lengthy one. Uh, the total time I spent here is about four hours, so this is a very lengthy one. So I think I'm going to uh, make a few comments here as we go along. Uh, so this video is basically trying to brush up on the remaining small details uh, that <coughs> uh, there are left to do, like uh, fixing up all the bricks. So basically uh, the creation of the bricks is just uh, taking most of those arrays and um, basically copying them uh, and uh, moving their base break into position like you would see um, so this one thing that like I was saying in the previous tutorial that I like I, I like about um, the, the free cat is how it handles brick is relatively very easy to make bricks here uh, actually very fast and uh, <clears throat> There's different ways that you can also think about grouping the bricks. In the future, I hope to, you know, find a way to, let's say, generate a brick like this one, either from, let's say, a face or a wall directly. But uh, we'll see about that later on. Um, but for now, <clears throat> let's focus on what we can do. I'm noticing that I'm still missing a few windows at the first floor. There's at least two windows and uh, four windows that I'm missing. The windows of the kitchen and the bathroom. Um, so as you can see, I'm just <coughs> placing them. Uh, nothing too fancy. Nothing too special. Uh, so okay, so I've noticed that there are a lot of different sizes of brick like you would see here in the end um, You know the size some some of the sizes don't match up very well um, So you would see me cross-check a lot because when I'm putting these bricks so Initially when I was doing this I thought that all the bricks had the same dimension, you know uh, to say that the entire building is consistent in terms of <clears throat> the brick sizes but that's not exactly like you can see here there's obviously two instances where the bricks are already different but the fact that uh, you can have all these bricks like that um, you know if you're trying to compute the amount of bricks that you need for a project it's be it's, it becomes a lot more easily because now the bricks are a little bit more real they're a little bit tangible so it's just that when I was creating the, the, uh, the shape itself, <coughs> I didn't specify its name. I could have said, okay, this is brick one, brick two, brick three, brick number four, and so on. And so that every time I create a new brick, it's going to give me, um, it's going to give me more, more, uh, you know, it's going to generate more names so that next time it's a lot easier to just search for bricks and see uh, where the bricks are. Um, and organize them, uh, you know, so that if I have a way to bring this into some kind of Excel sheet, uh, you know, I can just say, all right, uh, give me all the bricks uh, in the project. And so it's gonna print out all the different bricks and give me all their dimensions, their sizes, and in, an, in a very nice Excel sheet. I hope to get there eventually. <coughs> so, so the beauty of not destroying some of the features when you're modeling is that you can always uh, tweak them. Like I had noticed, I, you know, I thought I had this beam uh, on this side of the wall. The beam that I'm trying to measure, this beam here in white, that I was trying to measure, I, and, I, and I didn't realize that it wasn't in my project. So it was a lot easier to extract them from, from the other uh, beams and just... Uh, change the dimensions based on the the base sketch which is basically line and so here you can see that the last brick on top there is not exactly uh, 0.2 high so I had to really 
verify there was something that didn't make sense <clears throat> so this is where uh, I had to find a way to create a new style of brick so look at the strategy that I use here so basically uh, I just extract extrude the shape and then explode the shape and so I have a solid and then I copy the initial array up there and then I just replace the base sketch with a new solid the new shape it's very sweet very straightforward you know couldn't get any uh, any smoother than that <clears throat> and this allows me to quickly uh, fix up the drawing like you see even the DWG was suggesting a brick that's not exactly right uh, so me just stretching uh, the brick there is just very convenient <clears throat> now I've tried to explore this because sometimes you just want to be able to just have you know one brick at a time one brick at a time instead of just having uh, blocks of it named arrays you know so obviously I'm done with one side all I have to do is uh, acquire the, 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 the same size on the base and then position it <clears throat> computer is lagging here a little bit for some reason it happens but this time around I didn't lose my work Same strategy here, stretch that. And just basically place these bricks. It's very easy. And this project made it a lot easier because the bricks are just arrayed on top of each other like in a straight line. It's just a grid, you know. So if you could generate a grid, uh, you could actually gen generate this texture <coughs> instead of having to do with the bricks the way I do it. But Sorry about that. The reason I'm using the bricks, uh, I'm modeling the brick like this, is also because when, I, when you cut the plan view, I wanted to cut and tell me, okay, yeah, this is a brick I'm cutting, you know. So it's useful in elevation, in plan mode, and in all kinds of mode. It gives you the accurate re representation of the brick itself, which is cool. So it's just a little bit, it's just a bit boring to keep talking about the same thing. Uh, just watching me uh, place the bricks. I call this fine tuning. So there's this wood stud walls all over the place. Some of them have wood in them. Some of them are actually studs in them. It's really interesting. And one thing I like about these designs, uh, when I get to do projects like this, is that I get to eventually get into the mind of the project and appreciate uh, the thought that went into creating a project like this one. Because each project reveals uh, the thought that the architect had uh, you sort of get into the mind it's like when you're playing Beethoven you know you, you, you're playing the same uh, fingerings that Beethoven played you can see uh, you can almost feel the way he was thinking I mean it's not exactly the same thing but just being able to walk through somebody's steps allows you to uh, to get a feel for what the journey was like <clears throat> so obviously my computer is behaving a little bit weird here 
trying to lag on me here. So, but there's nothing else you can do but be patient because I did so much work and there's no way I'm going to lose that. So, I might as well wait for a little bit until it recovers its senses and then immediately save if I can. <coughs> there you go. So, just saved it. Now, place the remaining bricks. And one thing about the bricks is that the, when you're positioning it, it also feels like you're the mason, you know, like you're on the side, you have to think about placing each element one at a time. This is one thing that I like about working with FreeCAD is that you actually get to think about the way that it is built since you have to take one element, put it where it belongs, and then take another one, put it where it belongs, so you're stitching the whole thing, the whole puzzle together. <coughs> Still a journey to go. <clears throat> so now I'm deciding to uh, handle the remaining uh, wood walls extensions. Because, <clears throat> uh, so once I'm done with the entire building, that's when I'm probably going to look at the additions to see um, what you can do about it. You first want to get to the bottom of it first and then later on um, So I give it a little bit of a color to make it look like the other project, <clears throat> like to make it look like the other walls, so I can have some visual cues. So now that I'm done with that, you know, <clears throat> starting to clean up a bit, organize the drawing a little bit. Uh, there's just too much information now and trying to make everything consistent um, is uh, what I eventually started to do last. Oh, there's a few, wa there's a few um, inconsistencies still to fix. <clears throat> Here I'm just stretching that wall base into position <clears throat> and switching the block size with the original with the with the one that works. So all I have to do now is copy that whole thing, make a copy, and then uh, move it onto the next wall. <clears throat> and at this point, free, uh, FreeCAD file is about five megabytes, more or less. But 
I'm still surprised that it's not yet, you know, in the range of 10 gigabytes and 10, uh, you know, some outrageous number like it used, you know, like I'm familiar with. So everything seems still pretty lightweight, smooth. Um, you know, you can you can have a pretty dense FreeCAD project like this one. Is, it's not going to feel like it's already lagging or something. So basically back to organizing the drawing, uh, everything is just all over the place, so I need to start reorganizing the folders, making sure that, you know, if someone else, including me, has to go back into the project, um, it's fairly easy to find your way around. Because <coughs> until then, everything has just been all over the place. Here I'm just saving a few pictures. A few channel art. I'm still not very used to that tool over there. Um, that folder, auto group. I am still not used. I tried it, but I don't think it made sense. <coughs> so basically, Okay, so here, you know, I was I was amazed that okay, I can just copy that code by saving the picture, and then I can keep on uh, copy pasting that and save the picture to see what happens. But what happens is that uh, I have to rename I have to rename the 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 file itself. So I have to find a way to rewrite the code so that by just pressing one button, I can take a snapshot, and it's always going to save the picture with a new name while maintaining the settings that I want to. <clears throat> so that gives a lot of perspective about what I can start to do with code once I'm a bit familiar with what's going on. Of course just copying a code and pasting it is not helpful. I need to understand how to build new tools, new abilities. organization <clears throat> creating consistent folders experiencing a little bit of a lag here making sure that all the same types of wall are organized with each other all the wood walls all the bricks are in the folder um, funny how I have the tree view on the left on the right which is all displayed but I keep using the one on the left because that's the one I'm, I'm, used, I'm sort of used to <clears throat> so this is one of the things again with the, the view shade somehow it just turned dark again for some reason <clears throat> 
So I think that has to do with the bug. But I cannot tell what's going on at this point. Getting all the beams together in a beam folder. fan of grid pictures foundations and foundation structure so I'm trying to think of a good way to be organized here I don't think I like this music much much better <coughs> so at this point on uh, the main things left in the building would be organizing uh, getting the building is sort of ready for uh, to, for for tech drawer and some sheet layouts. <laughs> so that it, it it's gonna be a lot more easier to create annotation for it. <clears throat> getting all the furniture into one big furniture folder <coughs> so it's just easy to turn it on turn it off at, at will to the end of this just about two minutes left something strange about mirror objects is that they're not dependent when you hide it, the, the parent object the the, the main uh, object does not behave according to the, the parent object <coughs> so in that case I had to explode that slabs put the slab in the slab folder um, this video I will see you guys on the next one